look at some more if statements. So if statements always consider zero false. And so I'm going to put that. So if statements always consider zero false. And any uh, they consider any other number true. So any other number is true. Like in this code right here, so we have this if value. And then we and then we're going to, going to see out. So if that's true, it's going to see out. It is true. So if this is any value other than zero, so like say that value is equal to 20, it's going to run, when it gets to this if statement, if value is equal to 20, it's going to find that this is true. And so then it's going to execute this expression and it's going to print out it is true to the screen. If this is false, it's going to skip the see out it is true. So if this value is equal to zero, then it's going to skip that statement. It's not going to print anything out. It turns out this is useful because we can use this to check and see what values we have stored in variables. So for instance, if we wanted to just see if there was a value other than zero stored in this variable, we could do an if statement. And if it has anything stored in it other than zero, it's going to be true. If it has zero, it'll be false. We can check math so like so well we could check this x plus y so if x and y are zeros this statement is going to be false if one of them has a value stored other than zero this is going to be true um, we can put a mathematical expression in here so this pow a b um, if a is zero this statement is going to be false if a is anything other than zero that statement is going to be true and this is one thing to watch out for. So what they want here is, is x equal to 2. So if we run this if statement, let's say we want to say is x equal to 2, but we accidentally do this and just say x equal to 2, this is going to set x equal to 2. And so this statement will always be true. This is actually a pretty common error that can be really difficult to find. So just watch out for this. Anytime you're doing a comparison, be really careful not to just say equal. Make sure you do the is equal to. So let's do a quick example. The question is, write an if statement that performs the following logic. If the variable x is equal to 20, then assign 0 to the variable y. And assume that the variables are already declared, so just write the if statement. If x if x is equal to 20, make sure to use the double equals, not the single. And then it says we want to assign 0 to the variable y if that's true. So with the if statements, um, so we're going to talk about the curly brackets next, but if we have an if statement that's only one line, we could also just write this like this. It, so if we have an if statement, if, if our expression is only one line, we don't need the brackets because it's going to, the compiler sees since we don't have a semicolon here, the compiler sees this entire if statement as one line. So technically, this could be written like this, too. Although, don't write your if statements like this. That's really hard to read. But technically, you could write it like that as well. So that's why if you only have one line, you can put it like this. But if you have more than one line, which we're going to get to now, you need the the, bra the curly brace. With this one, so this is called the expanded if statement. This, we're saying if the score is greater than 90, the grade, we want to set grade equal to A, and we also want to print out to the user, good job. So we want to execute two lines of code if this statement is true. So if we left these off, like let's just say these are gone, this would only execute this line as part of the if statement, and then it would execute this line as regular code. So in other words, when this program is run, it would print out good job every single time, whether it's true or not. So if you have more than one line, you need to make sure to include the um, curly braces. And one thing I want to make sure, never put a semicolon at the end of your if statement like that because what that's going to do is 
it's going to basically end your if statement here. So it's going to see, oh yeah, the if that's true or false, and then it's not going to um, it's not going to execute the rest of your if statement. It's probably better to see that with this one. So like with this one, if we had to put our semicolon here, it would have compared that and then said it would have said if that's true or false, but then it would have thought the if statement was over, so it wouldn't have done anything. Or this next line would have been executed as regular. Let's do this example. What we want to do with this is write an if statement that performs the following logic. If the variable sales is greater than 50,000, assign 0 0.25 to the commission rate variable and assign 250 to the bonus variable. Let's do this together now. So we have, so we know that we need if, so we're writing an if statement. Sales greater than greater than, and then we're going to need some curly braces because we have more than one statement. And so we have if sales is greater than 50,000, we want to assign 0 0.25 to the commission rate. So we have commission rate is equal to 0 0.25. And we want to assign 250 to the bonus variable. So we have bonus is equal to 250.